the countries all trying to coordinate and get back to the action at the same time. We're ready. <laughs> Sebastian Aguera gets it to uh, Danny Rosso. Oh, the little flick inside was untidy. That was from uh, John Smith. Mindaro sets it up in the middle. But the uh, South African player, it was uh, for Nitek, I think, just got on the wrong side of it legitimately. The second player was the one who was penalised. Nika got in so early he was allowed to be where he was but the end result with uh, 45 seconds gone in the second half a chance for Diego Aguirre to reduce the arrears further it's not just the start that South Africa didn't want or need a great kickoff they fumbled it and the ball forms and could see her. he comes in from the side and gives away the penalty. He's actually given away a lot of penalties. They've got three hookers here. Del Santon, no, he's not involved at all. John Schmidt and uh, Danny Kutsia. Danny Kutsia, very, very much the man, the number one at the moment. Uh, but I think there'll be a little worried about the number of penalties he's giving away at the moment. It doesn't matter in this game, certainly will next week. I think he's looking some lurking around the corner. Aguera from about 37, 38 metres with the angle. Fires it, but fires it left of the posts. Disappointed with himself. Good. Up goes the high one for the big back rowers to chase. Knocked back beautifully. And South Africa have regained possession from the dropout. Pumped high but good. Nicely taken by Testore. He set it up well as well. A little chip. But you'd like to see the Uruguayan backs have a bit of a go, wouldn't you? You would, Joe. I don't think they've got a great deal of ability out there. I think they realise that. Time has gone down the line. It's not looked very smooth, what I'm surprised about. In situations like that, we haven't seen the South African back line have a go more. for the hole through the middle or so big tackle cheered by the crowd and I think it was uh, Sanchez who got in there yeah that's another turnover to Uruguay and even those little turnovers are triumphs for the Uruguayans and he held on in the tackle he was isolated no support there it was a pity I said that it was a cracking tackle from Sanchez right back from where he came unfortunately the ball then got released poor kick from Kuhn well a little chip and chase straight away from Cardozo not the thing to do really should have run there and looked for support Kuhn now with a chance to put it wide well very well taken in the end by Freif Juggled with it, but held on. In the end, though, the attack runs out of steam. They're forced to kick. And a neat enough clearance from Cardozo. It's not smooth, though, is it, John? Down that bat line. Greek just about held on to it. It really was bubbling around. And Uruguay pulling on the 
replacements. And there's one I thought would come on. Nicolas Grigier, number 19, is uh, ready to come on. He would normally have been one of their starting back rows because uh, he's one of their very good players. But uh, he was left on the bench simply because he couldn't get away from work in time. They gave him uh, three weeks holiday and they were prepared to give him two weeks off, unpaid leave, but no more. And if he took more than that, he was going to lose his job. So he came five days later than the rest of the team and uh, they felt he hadn't had enough time to really acclimatise. And the other man coming on is the other one who was in exactly the same sort of situation. He had work commitments, Juan Menchaca, who in many ways is probably their best player. So. This now resembles the Uruguayan first 15. Couldn't get his work as remember those days. Yeah, when everybody was moaning about training in the evening and uh, having to do a proper job of work, I thought I could remember that. So Uruguay holding their own well and they've now got two of their better players on the park. Nearly charged down by Van der Westhaven, but they're not offside. There was a little knock forward by Sanchez. And South Africa have it, so Mr. O'Brien still playing advantage. It's shoveled out, but again, it's poor ball shoveled out. I think they feel because they're not under pressure that they can get away with things that they wouldn't normally try, and that's not good practice. Once again, almost a situation where Uruguay turned them over. The problem with the back line for me, John, is in Kuhn, you've got an old-fashioned fly half, if you like, more of a kicker than a handler. It just didn't look smooth leaving his hands at all. All the cramped up than outside centre. And that really a very poor reflection on South African play. Paddy O'Brien gave him all the time in the world to take advantage of the advantage. And in the end, they ended up 10, 15 yards back from where they started. Hold. Engage. Come up, come up. Okay. Clive Woodward is here this evening. The one time they can't stop you watching a practice session is when it's not a practice session, when it's a proper match. Well, they can't kick you out, can they? Hold. Engage. Thunder Vestaven feeds, and penalty this time to South Africa. The man penalised uh, Lemoyne, I think. Yeah, he's pointed out by the referee. He doesn't agree, but then he wouldn't. That is uh, Menchaka. Finds a good touch and uh, chases well to try and stop the quick throw in. Couldn't do it. Uh, Vans was there to take it quickly along the line the number eight Smith chipped through by Van der Westhaven well done Uruguay except they didn't have a scrum half there they protected it well still all right says the referee well great work I think it was the hooker Lamelas who tied it up in the end South Africa have come out in the second half, and I think we've started terribly. Seven minutes gone, nearly eight minutes. Yeah, it has been awful. Yeah, little Diego Lamelas played all the matches in the 1999 World Cup as well. He's enjoying himself. I think they will, Steve, as you say, uh, with nearly ten minutes gone in the second half, um, and no addition to the score, they'll consider that a bit of a result. Very flat pass from uh, from De Vesthazen, but allowed. De Vet Barry going through the middle. From De Vesthazen there again. A little reverse pass from Victor Matfield. Oh, and this is Vilimsa. Vilimsa. Yes, he got into touch. Well done. Good tackle. Great effort from little Yoki Pastore. It's a terrific tackle. He's flying into the corner. He's no slow, he's no slouch. Storey just comes out of nowhere. 
had to make it, did make it. Well done. Great effort because uh, Valenza is a very difficult man to stop as teams much, much better than Uruguay have found. O'Brien is saying uh, you've got to play if you don't quickly take the line out, they'll find themselves getting penalised, but uh, here they... They want to actually just rush in, but uh, uh, Mr O'Brien insisting that they actually form the line. Oh, and they've lost it now. It's always going to happen. And suddenly away goes to Niekirk again. Driving on. Can he get over? Well, I think he had a second go there. But he's laid it back at the vital moment. Smith has a charge. The number eight. That was Kutsia. Now they've got to go away. Coming in was Kreef. Uh, Good defence from Uruguay, and I think they've stolen the ball. Great work from Uruguay. A turnover in that situation, fantastic, and Aguirre completes the clearance, and the crowd really get behind the Minnows. Terrific play, the crowd loving it. And that Clyde Bumpen's not going to be either. a penalty the ball collapsed first which was uh, dragging it down was what he gave the first penalty for the ball again where you've got people from both sides involved and the ball held in hand at least two people from one side and one from the other in that case a lot more and what you're not allowed to do once it is being formed into a ball is the defending side is not allowed to drag it down Oh, and a quick take, and in goes Richard Bands, his second try, not as spectacular as the first, but again showing that he's got a very quick acceleration when he needs it. Richard Bands scoring the first try of the second half for South Africa. And that explosive acceleration for a prop. Of course, this is the one area where Uruguay really have struggled in the line-out. He wants it. He takes some stopping, doesn't he? Bit of an outside swerve there as well. Very impressive. Richard Bands, originally from the Eastern Highlands, from Mafeking. Now plays uh, his rugby for the Blue Bulls in Pretoria. So it took a bit longer than we might have expected. And we are 53rd minute, uh, but it's South Africa 43, Uruguay 6. Clearly made the take. Now they've got the ball. This is what I was talking about. Uruguay now are not allowed to drag that down. As long as South Africa are driving forward, they can keep it going like that. He's broken away and that was a tackle, so that was okay. From de Vestes, high set high. It's a good one too. Vilaps is underneath it. The deflection gets it to Smith. And a knock forward by Menchaka. Inevitably the game goes on, of course, the poor Uruguayans will feel the pace of it. No gaps out there, but it's uh now that South Africa need to do the work. Three kicks, South Africa. Hasn't gone ten. The drive away by the new man, Danny Rosario. Yes, he's over. You might have had... Uh, calls a few years ago about that perhaps being a second movement 
but once tackled, you're allowed to place the ball, pass the ball, or stretch out and touch it down again, as long as it's immediate. One area South Africa will be happy about is their back row. All three have had storming games. Here so. He's big and he's physical, tall, strong. It takes some stopping. Generally thought of as a blindside second row, and uh, he's got plenty of pace in, of course, for uh, uh, the captain, Connor Krecker. The knee injuries kept him out of. Uh, contention for a while he was meant to go on the european tour to the uk last year and just damaged his knee just before but uh, really making his presence felt now he's really the beneficiary of that uh Cronier quentin davis incident you know, because when those two were banished from the squad that was really when he came back into contention He's obviously a, a bit of a fiery one too, Steve, because he's only just back uh, having had a domestic suspension for punching. Apart, John, he's a good player, isn't he? He's had a good game tonight, all the back row off, I think. Yeah, they've just got too much power and pace for, uh, well, and height for the Uruguayos to handle, and uh, that has certainly been the, the biggest area of difference between the two sides. So South Africa toasted the 50. 50 points to six. And they just got so many options there. That one went wrong. The catch was brilliant. The referee apologising and saying he was in the way and he's given the scrum to South Africa. I think Uruguay might feel a little aggrieved at that. Something you don't often hear, though, is it? The referee apologising and saying it's my fault. Weakness, Steve. Weakness. Changes by South Africa. They're pulling on John Schmidt and Van Rotenbach. Klopp and Hooker. And the men coming off. Richard Vans and uh, Danny Kutsia. That time the referee not blaming anybody for the scrum going down. So often happens when you get uh, replacements at first scrum. Right now, can they get this back line working? Go, oh, Vilemsa in a pace, beautifully picked up. Oh, and a forward pass at the end, though, from Werner Hreef. He really should have held on, just panicked. All he had to do was hold on, and the support would have been there. The Lamsa, he looks good, he looks sharp. He's been the one threat. Nice handling, come off his wing. It's a lovely break here. And what they've got to do now is finish it. In the end, the final pass, with two queuing up. All he's going to do is pass it out, and it's a try. It sums up their night, really. Now, can Uruguay escape? Ooh, the pass was wicked. The last thing you want is to have to leap high in the air with two Springboks tearing at you. But, uh... I think that was, uh... Chaco who got it away, but uh, the referee now not uh, able to tell who's meant to be coming off and going on. Uruguay making another substitution. The man coming on is a number eight, Fernand Ponte. And it looks to me like Brignoni coming off. It is indeed. Oh, and the drive almost through the middle of the line out from Rosso. Well held in the end by the Uruguayan forwards. Springbox now trying to set it up. And was that the captain going in for his hat trick? Was indeed. Just from the best season, getting his third try of the match. Says he's going to retire after the World Cup. But quite fancy going out as top try scorer, isn't it?
Uh, once again, it was a line out. Once again, it was a drive down the mall. And once again, it was Van der Westhaven who finished it. There he goes, sniffs it out, just gets there. Hat trick for the captain. Kuhn misses the conversion. And now, all about getting uh, these lines of running and a bit more slickness into the back division. It's South Africa 55, Uruguay 6. Of course, in the last 20, this is the real problem now for the Uruguay. Just on fitness alone, of course. Not full pros, not, not most of them anyway. No, a very long way from it. Or was that obstruction? O'Brien thinks it's not. The tackler now just being told to get away, having made the tackle so that uh, the ball can be given to the support player. Nice work, a knock on that time by Vilipsa, though. And again, Uruguay sticking at their defensive duties as well, Steve. It's not like they're trying to play the rugby, they're trying to get it flowing, they just don't seem to be able to do it. The last pass, the little knock on. Just ain't going for them, is it? And the interesting thing is, I think you put your finger right on it, that uh, Kuhn seems to me to be very much an old fashioned style of life. He doesn't look happy at uh, really conducting uh, the big passing movements. Would be great for you in a defensive game where kicking dominates. But uh, I get the feeling that the tide has turned. This season, we've seen a lot more scores. Defence won the last World Cup. I think attack's going to win this one. I agree more with you, John. The South Africans have gone back to an old-fashioned way of playing, if you like. It's the way the boys play it, to be fair, but you know they have to change, they have to get with it. The rest of the team's playing really good attacking rugby. Well, they've taken off the skipper and the fly half. And we've got a new 9 and 10. On come Neil de Kock and Derek Hugard. Hugard, this sensational young player, gets a chance. Uh, only 20 years old. His first cap. Man who uh, scored 26 points in the 2002 Curry Cup final. But now a chance. Quick ball wanted for Uruguay. Two charges. Ken <laughs> trying to get people in and carry on rolling it forward. Bernardo Amarillo is on in the scrum half roll now, number 21 with the headgear. Decides he is going to pass it out this time. They don't really want to, they're getting wide, but a poor effort by Ibarra took his eye off it. The Chaka sprinting back. Gets there first, holds it up. Now the trouble is, if uh, Uruguay get hold of the ball now, have they got enough numbers back to actually be able to clear their lines? Well, they've done well. And Diego Aguirre decides to give it a go. They cough it up. Vilemsa. Running it back at them. Chip and go. The sprint is on. Again, thank goodness for Uruguay that it's been Chaka going back there. He's got real pace. And it's going to be a five-metre scrum because he carried it back over his own try line before touching down. And uh, South Africa will have the put in. They saved two certain tries there. So, oh, one burst of the first one. Sprinting 50, 60 metres. Saved that. And got up and saved another one. Yeah. Neil Decock. <laughs> first captain 2001, but he hasn't had many opportunities since. European tour but was injured against France. 
Or is there a gap through the middle? For a moment it looks as there was. He wasn't held. So Devet Barry allowed to get up. Penalty against Uruguay for coming in from the side. And now uh, Mr. O'Brien calling out uh, Diego Aguirre, the captain, and I'm sure he's going to warn them about uh, killing the ball. Wants to have a word because he's going to say that uh, we're going to have people in the bin, I'm sure. Sorry, sorry. At the tackle, they want football, so they need your players to not come inside or kill or yellow. Yeah, exactly that, John. In the side. He's saying to the Please, skipper quite rightly, don't go in the side, don't kill it, otherwise there'll be a sin bin. Penalty in front of the post, just five metres out. The cock over the ball. The referee says, wait for the whistle. Decides to go to the left, went the direct route and... Uh, Uruguay were equal to it. Now, can they get it moving slickly enough? Oh, and straight through instead. Over goes Derek Bugard. Well, the referee wants to have a look at it on the video. Not sure whether he got it down or not, but immediately he saw what the youngster could do. A little stop and go. Yes, it was slick before the impact he's had this season he goes he knows where the try line is now does he get it down <laughs> look to me first impression he dropped that Ooh, that is a difficult one he's got to get down with pressure on it it certainly didn't go forward so we can rule that out so that's fine it goes backwards out of there but does he get any pressure on it not for me, doesn't John know. He almost like places it behind him, if you like. So he just squirts out the back there. Do you know, I really wouldn't like to call that one. Because I don't think it was out of his hands. I think he's in, he's in contact with the ball as the ball's on the ground, just there. If it had gone forwards, definitely no try. But as it's gone backwards, he's just, it's all legal, providing he got any pressure on at all. There we're seeing it, that's what he's wrestling with too. That's right, that's a freeze frame right there. He's almost got his own hand underneath it, scooping it backwards. Well, Kelvin Dika from New Zealand is the man who's got to make the decision. I wouldn't like to call it if it was World Cup final, would you? Exactly not. I mean, it's not really going to make any difference in this one. So now we got 55-6. Or oh, he says lost forward. Now that's the one thing it wasn't. Definitely not lost forward. But you called it right, Steve. No downward pressure, says the referee. How he gets forward out of this, though, I shall never know. Well, it actually went backwards, didn't it? So it becomes a five meter scrum and Uruguay have the put in. Will we see the great escape all over again? Oh, they're being really rocked back on their own ball this time, but they held them just long enough. Didn't get it into touch. Vilemsa puts it in field. That was Kree. Back to Vilemsa. Oh, a little fumble forward. No, says the referee. Picked up by Rousseau in acting scrum half. That went backwards too, says the referee. And in go Uruguay this time. They've got the turnover and they fully deserve it. Get it wide. In goes the kick. It wasn't a very clever one. Straight to Werner Grief. He gets it across to Vilemsa. Now this guy can really go if he sees a bit of space. He can cut holes. Terrific tackle by the replacement scrum half. Well, that was forward, surely. 
And it was, yes, picked up. I think he might have needed a bit of help from the touch judge. Getting forward. They're smiling, but most things tonight, I said the rest of it bang on. The bet Barry. All the water carriers rushing onto the Uruguayan side. I think uh, Paddy O'Brien will want them off. The feed coming in from Amarillo. Again, they're going backwards. Oh, well, he popped it up, but he popped it up straight for one of these Springboks. Jacques Ferry, pass going out, and going for the try. Back is Gorda. What try? Nice little inside pass from Ricardo Lucha, who just come on for Tinas Delport. And while all the rest of it was going on, uh, Selwyn Boom came on for Victor Matfield as well. The conversion is good from Derek Hugart. And the score moves up to 62-6 for South Africa. That was a pity. Seems all Uruguay stand the tie. They got the ball. Unfortunately, they're one of these teams look actually better without the ball. They copped it back up again. And the try in the end was inevitable. Sanchez and Lamelas coming off. And the two men come in, Baruti, the 20 and a half stoner, and uh, Juan Andres Perez is the uh, replacement hooker. You get the feeling we're always going to go for the long dropout, just to make sure that South Africa have to come a long way back. Emiliano Ibarra. It leaves it to uh, Juan Manchaca, and Manchaca finds touch exactly on halfway. Some very tired Uruguayans down there. And in this last ten, they've got to dig deep. Do well. Yeah, this is where uh, uh, scoreboards can start to change very, very rapidly. Dupont. Chipping for Vilemsa. Well, he finds a touch, but uh, I think he'd rather hope that one will stay in. Oh, might kick it there. Still got 10 minutes to go. Come the back line. Give him some practice. Let's get some handling done. Chief, nothing by doing that. Not in this game. That's a very good take by Bado under pressure. And Uruguay having a small success getting five or six meters on the drive. Referee in the way. Not forward. And Paddy O'Brien actually a bit guilty there of being in the wrong place. That was picked up, he says, before it hit the ground, so no knock-on. It was a knock-on that time, though, and uh, Uruguay have recovered possession. And they drive the ball out of their own 22. Well, they made a good 10. Again, the crowd getting behind them before they release it to Amarillo. Good drive in. Uruguay still in control of the ball. And they hold him. Amarillo. Aguirre, well he almost 
got through on the dummy and didn't think he had. Again, good driving from the big forwards. And he came in from the side, this is an advantage against... Uh, <laughs> uh, Uruguay, they didn't want to know, they knew they could do more in making 10 metres. That went backwards too, says Mr O'Brien. Up to the 22. Good driving work from uh, Bado. And this time, uh, a penalty against the Uruguayans. They split away from the ball and therefore ran into their own player who was obstructing. Certainly where well, they're at the best. Mr O'Brien explaining to them the front man must have the ball. So they've given it away. Well, the only replacement from South Africa not on the field is Hendro Scott. And I think he's now warming up and ready to come on. Coach Strada will certainly want to give them all a run out, which is now achieved. Scott's on, and I think it will be uh, Rosso coming off. Scott's only six foot one and a half. Not forward. And the Uruguayans could pick it up, but it'll be a scrum down to Uruguay. I say, John, the South African handle has been so poor, hasn't it? It has, and uh, they've not even had the nous to tighten it all up, slow it down, and get themselves moving, which I'm sure, if I'd been coaching them, that's what I'd have wanted them to do. Now the club really getting behind the underdogs, but another little nudge forward has ruined that chance, and <laughs> Paddy O'Brien almost saying sorry, but the laws are the laws. No matter what happens now, the Uruguayans could command this game with a lot of credit. And would you imagine the South Africans? They've got a lot of worries. On goes the... Uh, Third prop, off comes Pablo Lemoyne, and on goes uh, Guillermo Scaracci. Picked up by Smith. Now a chance for Valencia, he's got such pace, but good work from uh, Ibarra, he just got to him. Well, that certainly looked for a win. But I think he missed a, a very right. definite forward pass earlier in that move. Yep, I agree with that job. It wasn't that the touch judge. He was banging line. All well, the cheers now are for uh, Perth Waves going around the ground. And there are good waves over here in Perth, I can tell you. Coming west again after yesterday's match at uh, the Telstra Stadium. Come to the wall. We are 2,000 miles west of Sydney. It's a big country. Catch and drive. Well, are they going to manage to actually drive the amateurs over this time? It looks as if they are. There's got to be a try. Who's going to come up with the ball? It's number 19, Henry Scott, the man who's only just come on. His first try for his country. Well, they scored the try, but really I'm not quite sure what they've achieved by doing that. They know one thing, they can catch the ball in the line out. And they can do a driving ball. What happened if I was them? Just giving the back some practice. Pops out the side in his shot. He's over, he'll be happy. I'm sure the South African coach will be.
so another restart. 67-6 now, South Africa lead. Bugat goes to the touchline. Well, still nearly five minutes left on the clock. I think now you get the feeling that uh, Uruguay are trying to slow it down, Steve, whenever they can. This is Perez. And again, good work from Bayo. He's to fight really a lone battle there in the lineup. The only man who's got the sort of physique to compete with the South Africans. And uh, a, a penalty to Uruguay, a man coming in from the side again. Someone boom, the man penalized. And the suit Uruguay down to the ground. Let's wind the clock down now. With them all going, eat it up. They'll be very happy. Menchaka puts it into touch on the South African 22. I think it's a forlorn hope, but it would be great to see a Uruguayan try. It really would. It wouldn't be with the winger, though, would it? Once again, Bado is up the front. And the time throw goes to him. That's the one that works best. They've given up on all thoughts of anything else. And yet again, he's come up. And then it's... Again, guilty of obstruction. There was somebody riding shotgun for the ball carrier. Rodrigo Capo, the number eight from Castro. He's given it everything as well. Well taken by Manchaka. Hoists it high and is in for the chase. Safaka can't get to it. Freef tidies up and gets it wide. The long pass from Hugart. Well, again, they're very flat, too flat. There's a bit more forward movement. That could have been forward even. And in these sort of situations, South Africa actually looking very unimpressive. Penalty against uh, Uruguay. Hands in the ruck. What I find amazing, John, is that the 11 tries that South Africa scored, there's only one I can really think of where the ball's gone down the line nicely and been created. Absolutely. And the rest really down to superior physique and fitness. And you think that these guys have to travel 20 miles, 20 kilometers, sorry, out of town in Montevideo on their training evenings. It's a long journey there. It's, it's a long journey back. And uh, it really is not an equal contest. It's a better pass. But again, Khrif just caught. Great effort by Ibarra. He's looked a bit naive at times, but uh, he's certainly not short on courage. Chip and go. The sprint's on. Oh, no, he couldn't get there. That's a try, I think. Khrif, I think, has scored. They want to go to the video camera, but I think, in fact, it ended up with Pastore, or was it um, Aguirre, just popping it up for him. Oh, he was so tired, the ball, and he was treading water, wasn't he? He was like going, but he wasn't getting anywhere. And that's a good try, no doubt about that one. In fact, it was uh, Sebastian Aguirre. He couldn't possibly rule obstruction because he bumped into his own man before he put the ball down. <laughs> Come on, it's a try. Let's get on with it. Well, the only possible question mark is 
whether he got it down inside the dead ball line and we've certainly seen that enough times they really are being a bit slow with these decisions scared of making a mistake i suppose which you can understand but that was always going to be a try the 12th try for south africa and that uh, going uh, on target in the end but dipping underneath the bar the attempt from hugart 12 tries to South Africa, 72-6 they lead. With a chip through, all the old Aguirre, giving it all all night, and right at the death, he just made the one mistake. I think he might have been saying to his teammates, uh, I got there as soon as I could. Nearly 17,000 watching this game, which is good for a, a match which uh, everybody knew was going to be something of a mismatch. Now this could well be the last chance for South Africa to attack. But Uruguay have come up with the ball. Aguirre hoists it high. And in fact, uh, those men were all in front of the kicker, so they had to not go within 10 metres and then actually retreat. Hugart, now was that forward? Yes, it was. The lamps are put away. But uh, Hugart, in making that pass, seemed to fall very awkwardly. Looking where we are. All you can see across the pitch is about five Uruguayans walking. They were never going to get there in the cover. That was the forward pass. That was a good call. Yeah, I think he took a tackle just as he passed, and that uh, is what uh, caused him to fall badly. Ashwin Valemsa. As uh, Francois Pinar was saying, was probably heading for a very uncertain future as a member of one of the, the gangs in the townships but uh, had this real talent for rugby, it was spotted and uh, he had the character to make the most of it. He certainly looks sharp, not quite got away tonight. Every time he's had the ball, he's looked very dangerous. So, the offence was the forward pass. And Mr. O'Brien penalising the Uruguayans for not engaging, uh, not waiting for the engage before driving in. I think he's done pretty well. Difficult match. One-sided matches are always difficult to referee. But again, a bad mistake by the South Africans. Real scrappy, messy play from them and a turnover which ends up as a penalty for Uruguay. And that kind of night for them, I'm afraid. And certainly have to sharpen up before the England game. I don't want to take Providence here. But all in all, they cannot be happy. Right, this uh, certainly a last chance for Uruguay. They're inside the South African 22. They've got the throne at the line out, they've got the crowd behind them. But I doubt whether they've got the energy to capitalise. Beautifully driven on by uh, Beruti. Set up, but this is where it all tends to come to a stop. This time it's Sturace. Sturace. Well, again, it all collapses. On goes the drive, they're not going to let this one out. In goes Starace again. Ponte now with the ball in his hand. It does come out eventually to Amarillo. In from deep comes uh, Ibarra. Nice little pop up. There's half a chance here. Storming on. It's Starace. Amarillo 
They put it wide. The captain trying to get in there and get his hands on the ball. Still in control. They've got men over out here on the left. On goes the drive from Capo, and he's into touch. And the referee says that's enough. The end of the game. South Africa have won it 72 6. We'll take a break there, but don't go away. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Travelex, the world's foreign exchange company. Cheeseburger now only 69 p. Loving that. I'm loving it. Love, you said you'd deal with this credit card balance. <gasps> it's sort of scary. Yeah. We hardly even notice it anymore, do we? A debt you don't nail down can become draining. Get a rate that starts low and stays low by transferring your balance when you take out a Capital One No Hassle Platinum card. Fight this, Bambi. I've transferred to Capital One. What's in your wallet? There are other disposable razors, but now there's new Gillette Sensor 3. Totally new handle. Three blades, mounted on responsive springs that adjust to your face. 